Guys, Summoner's War Update 702 is here, which means Cookie Run Monsters are... Cookie Run Monsters. Guys, Cookie Run... This is, a, this is a reality. It's a reality now. Cookie Run Monsters are finally here in Summoner's War. We get to see all of their skills, even though I know you already saw them from other channels. It's fine. We're seeing them together. I don't know why we're looking at this. This is not the update notice. This is the update notice. Some of them have leader skills. Some of them don't have leader skills. Uh, I don't believe Ginger Brave. Oh, Ginger Brave does have a critical rate leader skill. He also has 110 base speed. This was the one... 110 base speed before his passive comes into play. This is the one, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, that is going to counter uh, or counter speed teams, but also can be used in speed teams, which I kind of feel like that might be the situation. Oh, we're already at Ginger Brave. Fantastic. So, Brave Attack, attacks enemy stun for one turn, 50% chance. Brave Dash, marches bravely to attack an enemy, removing one beneficial effect, increasing the cooldown by one turn. You can also just offset this by using Shield Will. I just ruined the entire Ginger Brave strategy. Next buff, it's going to be removes two beneficial effects, and increases the skill cooldown by one turn. It's a very lackluster skill, except that his speed between his uh, base speed and the bravest cookie passive makes him very very fast i don't know how fast i guess we'll find out in uh, probably a couple hours while people are testing to see how fast he actually gets maybe i could just test and then post it in the comments in the community post or whatever but he's going to be very very fast as soon as his passive comes into play because like i said he's got 110 base speeds so this should be an anti-cleave kind of unit kind of very similar to segment he doesn't strip everything though. Segment half the time doesn't strip anything, but that's that's for a different that's for a different time. He's not as effective. He doesn't have as much juice as Segment though, because Segment skills give her more value than what he does. But anyway, let's move on to pure vanilla cookies. So we have the first skill: attacks the enemy target, recovers HP of the ally with the lowest HP ratio by 10% of your max HP. Uh, it's very similar to like for example the Rileys, the Rileys of the game. Not Riley, the the Rileys, because they're not totemists anymore. Uh, Love and Peace illuminates all allies with the Vanilla Orchid staff, recovering their HP by 15%, creating a shield equal to 15% of your max HP for two turns. It's kind of like a Louise, kind of not as strong as Louise, but it's only a second skill. Blessing of Nature passive increases. So these are all Nat fives. These are all support units. Uh, increases the recovery amount of attack bar, increasing skills. So this is increases recovery amount and attack bar increasing amount from skills that allies receive by 30% each. Effect does not accumulate and does not apply in battle against bosses. Think about this kind of similar to how the Fire Rune Blacksmith works, where it doesn't necessarily have to be her that does the attack power buff and the defense buff. As long as it's something on the team doing attack power buff and defense buff, her passive is going to come into play. So this one... Now that I think about it, with Vertiheal is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Attack bar increase. That's going to be... Well, it says attack bar increase amount from skills. So, possibly not... Possibly they already thought about that negative interaction before that was a thing. So, then we have... By the way, these all have uh, leader skills for Arena. They have bad base speed. Base speed is only 96 for each of them. But they have Arena leader skills. This one, the Fire one, has 33% uh, crit rate. Water one has 44% attack power. Wind one has 55% uh, resistance. Light one has 44% defense. And then dark one has 44% HP. So this water one, same first skill. Second skill attacks the enemy to grant oblivion for two turns with sealed magic. So that's another unit that has oblivion. We have just a few, just a handful of units in the game that do oblivion. Very strong skill, but this one two turns oblivion just added to the list of uh, oblivion monsters in the game then we have increased attack power increased attack speed immunity on all on all allies for two turns this could be a nice combination especially with the leader skill for uh poseidon for leia it would be nice if it had a sp well if it had a speed lead it'd be very nice but just the fact that it does enable those units those speed based damage dealers for arena offense to do a lot of damage but i think I think more likely people will still continue to use speed leads with those teams because that's the whole point of those things is to outspeed and then do a lot of damage based on attack speed. But this could be a thing that some people like to use for uh, for arena. So I guess we'll find out. It's it's a usable unit for arena offense, a usable enabler. Uh, then we have the wind one, same for a skill. Second skill is the same as the fire one. It's just a budget version of Louise. Again, it's a second skill, it's not a third skill, so of course it's not an issue being a budget version of uh, a different Nat 5's third skill. 
Uh, graceful determination passive when an ally with a shield's attack deals damage equal to 30% of the damage dealt uh, to the shield to its attacker. So consider this. Uh, well, let's finish reading the skill. In addition, creates a shield equal to 15% of your max HP on the ally with the lowest HP for two turns when your turn starts. This is kind of similar to how some of the LD5s with damage reflection work. So if she gets a turn before the damage dealers, this is going... Like, if Alicia hits the team with this on, Alicia may just die by the end of her first attack and not get a second attack. So she has to actually uh, have the shield up for this to activate, but it's not really uh, not really great base speed for this to take turn one for the most part. So we'll see. Because it's a passive, but it's only it's only when they have the shield. So uh, then we have vanilla, and this is the one with the resistance leader skill. Uh, then we have the light one, which we already mentioned in the other in the other video, so we don't really have to go over the light one too much. It's very similar to the dark hell lady a little bit, because it grants endure and uh, immunity on the ally target, resets cooldown time. If it's used on a dead ally, the ally will be revived with little HP. Cooldown time will be increased by two turns, but grants the same effect as used on a living ally. Uh, not uh, not affected by the cooldown increasing or decreasing skill. Uh, and then we have so ki kind of similar ish to the the dark hell lady uh, And then we have dark one Same first skill sealed magic oblivion second skill and then frozen kingdom time frozen kingdom removes all beneficial effects on all enemies Decreases taxes. So this is gonna be a fun one. This is HP leader skill uh, strip on all enemies, decrease attack speed, and absorbs attack bar by 15% each. Unfortunately, base speed is 96, so I would normally say, hey, this is going to be a great unit with Swift Runes, but with 96 base speed, what are you going to outspeed? You're going to outspeed a snail. So if you're fighting a snail, then, especially with this new unit in the game, this is just going to, you know, the, uh, the Ginger Brave, this is not, not going to outspeed that. Ginger Brave is just going to outspeed everything. Uh, so well, not Leo, but everything aside from it's gonna be a Leo counter. I mean, or Leo's gonna Leo's gonna absolutely counter this uh, Ginger Brave already. So there we go. Um, would be great with Swift Runes if it didn't have uh, 96 base speed. We have Hollyberry Cookie, which we already discussed. The fire, the fire one looks like the most interesting, probably one of all of these. Um, damage deals according to your defense for the first skill. Escorts the ally with the lowest HP for three turns. For the second skill, Oath on the Shield. Charges fearlessly towards the enemy target with the Hollyberry Shield. Deals damage increases according to your defense on the attack target and stuns for one turn. And then we have the Hollyberry Shield with the power of Hollyberry Shield. Decreases damage to your allies take by 200% of your defense until the next turn starts. Immunity to inability effects during this time. It's very similar to, well, at least... Some of these are very similar to the, the Cookie Run Kingdom version. <laughs> getting Cookie Run Monsters, guys. We got Cookie Run Monsters. I don't know why I'm saying getting we got Cookie Run Monsters. Because it's already in the game. So, uh, these ones, leader skill-wise, have... Oh, they all have defense leader skills for their elements. So, Fire 1 has 50% defense leader skill for fire elements. Uh, water 1 has 50% defense for water elements. Uh, wind one has 50% defense for wind elements, etc, etc. So, uh, this is cleanse increased attack bar by 15% each. These are all 101 base speed. Are they all 101 base speed or does someone awaken into speed? No, they're all 101 base speed. So, uh, cleanse and increased attack bar by 15% each. This pairing passive, an ally takes damage from an... Oh, this is the uh, Xingzhe passive. If an ally takes damage from an enemy, you have a 15% chance to offset that damage attack the enemy instant. It's similar. It's not exactly the same. Uh, offset the damage, though, is, is the difference. Uh, attack the enemy instantly to deal damage proportion to your defense and stun for one turn. But it's similar to Xingzhe. It's just mitigated damage from the ally versus mitigated damage from yourself. So... Then we have the Wind one. So these are all defense-based units as well. Defense-based units, defense leader skills for their elements, their respective elements. Uh, first skill is the same. Oath on the Shield is the same as the Fire one, which we already discussed five seconds ago and also in a previous video. And then we have Cry of Unity. Cries of Unity creates a shield equal to 20% of your max HP on all allies for three turns, increases their defense for three turns, in addition decreases the skill cooldown of all allies by one turn each. So it's kind of like a, 
who does a defense buff shield? Why am I thinking defense buff shield? Someone does a defense buff shield. I can't remember for the life of me who does a defense buff shield because they never use it. Something does a defense buff shield. And then like a Mav, decreased skill cooldowns by one turn each. Right, I like to compare that to Mav. A lot of people know what Mav does. Maybe not at this point of the game. Maybe they did three years ago. Now they're like, doesn't he dig a, like a wings and he does a little wingy thing? Yeah, he does a little wingy thing. Um, light one, oath on the shield. Of course, the ally with it's the same as the other ones. I don't know why I'm saying it again. Uh, passive, the different uh, skill. Whenever you attack the enemy, your defense increases by 10% each up to 10 times. This deals bonus damage in proportion to the difference between the enemy target's defense and your defense. It's like an Artemiel, but personally, I don't think this is as exciting as Artemiel. We'll see. We'll see. Sometimes it's hard to see on paper. And then you see in the game, it's like, oh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Uh, then we have the Dark One. So same first and second skills as we've seen before. And then we have Dragon Slayer Shield. Awesome name. Attacks all enemies to deal damage proportion to your defense and decreases their defense for two turns. Afterwards, grants invincible on all allies for two turns. This one, I feel like some of these are like primed for getting buffs in the future. Like, it doesn't seem like too crazy for a lot of this stuff. So, I think the fire one could be really fun, actually. But some of these, some of these I think that will get like buffs of just like activation rate or something else. So, I suppose we'll see. Um, yeah, I suppose we'll see. Some of these four stars I think are pretty decent, though. Okay, so we'll get on to the four stars now. I mean, no one's going to get these LD5s anyway. Say that now. I say that. Wait, wait. Here's the thing. I sh I probably should have talked about this already. And let's. Is this here or is this? So they can't be used in the China tournament. Uh, the the next part of SWC, which is the China, but they can be used in the next round of the Europe part of the tournament. So they are going to be able to be used in SWC. They are going to be able to use in the rest of the RTA season, but not Siege tournament. So curious if some of this stuff makes some players that just happen to get lucky and get some of the LD5. I don't think that the LD5 ones are really anything crazy, though. I don't think this is... I'm curious if this is going to change how SWC plays out, but honestly, I don't feel like this is really strong enough to make that big of an impact to SWC, which maybe that's kind of the intention that they were going for, is they're like, we'll buff these later. We'll buff these after... <laughs> we'll release them now and then buff them after SWC. So you could see them getting noticeable buffs afterwards. Which is... That's just what happens with any new units in the game. We weren't excited about Oliver at first. And then we're like... People are feeding Oliver. And then he gets to be broken, ridiculous OP. And then they're like, oh, I... Sh I was correct in feeding Oliver because he's broken. Like, that doesn't... That logically does not make any sense. That, you're, you, you're glad that you... Anyway... Moving on, espresso cookie, flying coffee beads, attacks the enemy to prevent from receiving beneficial effects. This is just a small chance. Actually, we could take a look at what the... I don't think these guys get any increase in... Oh, I didn't notice that. Okay, so the fire one has a 99 speed. Water one has 114 speed. So that's something to, to take into consideration. The other ones have 99 base speeds. They don't have any leader skills for any of them. But water one... Uh, water one's uh, interesting. 114 base speed always makes things worth a second look if they have speed leads or really high base speeds. So, uh, I wanted to see the activation rate. So, it does actually go up to 50% activation rate for the first skill. So, that's nice. Uh, extraction, second skill attacks the enemy, set the attack bar to zero, decreases the target's HP by up to 30%, up to five if it's a boss, proportion to the reduced attack bar. And then, roasting attacks all enemy. This is actually pretty pretty solid so this oh my goodness what did i do this in addition to lucian this is this is kind of like a screw you dark anubis skill attacks all enemies to because he was he, the only one that did this right only one that did branding for two turns aoe brands now this one aoe brand for two turns increase that because like, lucian if you have a defense break on your enemies it doesn't matter but brand if you have a brand on all of your enemies lucian is then supercharged and does crazy amounts of damage. So, uh, yeah. So, Tiana, um, Tiana Bastet, Fire Espresso Cookie. What is his name? 
Oh, it's just espresso, just espresso cookie. Okay, fire espresso. I don't know why I was ex expecting uh, something different, but those two, fire espresso cookie and uh, Lucian, and that's gonna be pretty solid damage. AOE brand, AOE big damage. So uh, grants following effects for two turns each: decrease attack power to the enemy with the highest attack power, decrease defense to the enemy with the highest defense, decrease attack speed to the enemy with the highest attack speed. So, that AoE brand is, is what's going to make it, though. No leader skill, no crazy base speed, but AoE brand. Uh, these are all attack power units, or attack-based uh, attack type units, though. Attack, 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 attack. And these ones are, these ones are actually different, these, uh, these mountain lines. So, those are four stars, these are four stars as well. People should be able to get this Fire Espresso cookie. That's why this is actually interesting. Right, so we got the water one, uh, prevent from re receiving beneficial effects. We got the grinding attacks, all enemies three times the giant whirlwind, reduce their attack bar by 20% each, attacks them once more to freeze for one. Oh, this is the TOA one. Yeah, this is the, it's a, it's a CC second skill, AOE CC. And then the cold brew passive attacks, the frozen enemy reduces the target's attack bar by 30% each. If the frozen enemy gains a turn, target's HP will be reduced by 10% each. It's like a TOA kind of unit, in my opinion. So, aside from his base speed is very good, feels like a TOA unit. It's CC, it freezes, and attack age decreases. So, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's similar to Tyrant, it's similar to uh, Varad, it's similar to Poseidon. Anywhere you would use those, you'd probably use this guy, right? You could use those in PvP, though. Uh, then we have, and he's also, he's a four star, so there we go. Uh, flying coffee beans for the wind one. Um, same thing, grinding is the same uh, CC skill as the second one, as, as the uh, water one. And then caffeine, you'll be immune to sleep, and just, just, not all, not all CC, just sleep. Oh, cause caffeine, you're immune to sleep. Grants one of the following effects for two turns when you gain a turn, increase attack power, increase defense, or increase attack speed. You don't know what it's actually gonna be. It's gonna be inconsistent. People are not gonna like this because it's inconsistent, but immune to sleep. At least there's that. So, it's gonna be a anti, anti Hathor, anti succubus kind of thing. It's gonna be another one. See, this is how they the Hathor has just been nerfed over and over and over throughout the years, just by different things being introduced. Not necessarily that they nerfed Hathor specifically, just different things being the 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 fire the the fire cats, all the cats, the new fat cats, uh, hypno meows, Hufflepuffs, whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, uh, then we have the light one, uh, extraction, this is the same as the, uh, fire one, which, that's not the exciting one, we have the ristretto attacks all enemies to decrease their, de but I don't think this ca this caffeine passive is, like, super crazy, because you don't know, you don't know what to expect, it's gonna be random, you don't know if you're gonna increase the defense, and it's like, yay, I was hoping, like, if you're gonna use it for arena offense, like, oh, I was hoping for the attack power buff, but you didn't get it, right? So... Um, Ristretto, light one, text all enemies, decrease their defense for two turns, increase their cooldown by one turn each. I think this is actually going to be pretty decent. Defense break, increase cooldowns, as long as this actually lands. It's a nice activator for some big damage. Especially if the things have revives on them, like if you're hitting Perna, if you're hitting Samoth, if you're hitting things like that. Increase cooldown time by one turn each. Or even stuff in, uh, in Guild Wars and Guild Siege, right? Because it's a four star. So you can use it in four-star bases. You can use it against the Unus, for example. Defense break and increase their cooldown. So just uh, food for thought, right? Then we have the dark one. Same first and second skills we've already seen. And then the blending attacks all enemies three times. Evens out the HP ratio. This is the... Uh, we mentioned this in the previous thing. This could be pretty fun. We've got the CC, second skill. And then we've got the even out the HP ratio and attack bar of enemies. So this could be a really cool thing for, for like, cleave offenses if there's going to be something that's going to cut in with Nemesis and it changes the attack bar on that. So, I mean, you could also just decrease the attack gauge, but this is going to provide a couple of different things in the same uh, in the same thing. So, Madeline Cookies, one of these was very exciting. I don't remember which one is very exciting. So, oh, the Fire one, actually. So, Fire one is a four-star attack, uh, attack type unit. Celestial Light, so this Commander's Honor, the first skill attacks an enemy, decrease the attack bar by 30%, 30% chance. Uh, not... Not quite always going to be that skill, though. 
Commander's Honor calls upon the Celestial Light, while under the Celestial Light Glorious Attack, the first skill, will attack all enemies and you'll be immune to inability effects. Celestial Light gets dismissed when you take 50% of your max HP and damage as total. HP as damage in total. Then we have Narcissism. Uh, attacks additionally if your HP is at 70% or above when you attack an enemy on your turn. This could be a cool combination. I mean, this is only on your turn, but this could be a cool combination to make him attack, AoE attack, multiple times with the first skill. Celestial Light makes this an AoE. And then gets an additional turn on his turn to do multiple AoEs with skill 1. Could be very interesting. I could see some I could see some utility there. Again, it is only on his turn though. So I was at first I was thinking like, oh we can try Karu, but it's only on his turn. So Or the the extra attack. But this should still do more will it do more damage than the I don't know what the multipliers are, but will it do more damage than the Fire uh Magic Knight is the question. But just some food for thought. Uh moving on to the water one. Uh, attacks the enemy, decrease attack bar, same first skill, I don't know why I'm even reading that. Calls upon Celestial Light, this is the same second skill, Angel's Blessing, uh, offsets the incoming damage, may cause you to die, removes all harmful effects, uses Commander's Honor instantly. So this is interesting. Things that prevent their own death and revive themselves are always useful, in one way or another. So we'll see, this is kind of one that I feel like we have to play around with and see if it's actually going to be as useful as I hope it is, or I think it might be. Um, wind one is actually, so wind one is HP type, right? Decrease attack bar, same skill with the first skill. Uh, commander strike, this is attack the enemy two times, stunning the enemy for one turn, disturbing HP recovery for two turns, 50% chance each. More damage according to your max HP. I don't get very excited about this, but third skill, increase attack power, critical rate, and attack bar by 15%. This one, what is his base speed actually? Let's see. 103, 103, 103, 103. So this is 103 base speed. HP type unit, and this is going to, this is, think about this kind of like how the, um, well, there's a couple units that do this, but think about this kind of like the Fire Hell Hound, where he was useful in the day, I don't know why I'm saying this, because a lot of people didn't play back eight years ago, he was very useful with Lucian, you could put 70% crit rate on Lucian, and then between attack power buff, crit rate buff, and then uh, increase attack age. This is this is like a, the next version of Fire Hellhound. Now that I say this, Fire Hellhound's gonna get a second awaken and do the exact same thing, and then we're gonna be like, oh, we don't need to use this guy anymore because Fire Hellhound is gonna do the exact. If Fire Hellhound winds up doing the exact same thing with the second awakening, then we really wouldn't need this. But it's still gonna be a nice combination for fast cleaves, and he's a he's a HP type. Like the other ones are attack type. This guy's like, I'm going to be good with cleaves, but I'm not going to be an attacker. I'm going to just be a HP type unit. So, uh, you do still have to have whatever damage dealers fast enough to follow that up, though. So, take that into consideration. Then we have the light one. We already talked about the first and second skills. Attacking the enemy silences the enemy for one turn, 50% chance. Recovers HP by 15% of the damage dealt. Is this is that exciting? I don't think that this is that exciting, to be honest. Although, this is an AoE. So that makes it more exciting. AoE Silence. First skill. I've changed my mind on whether or not I think this is exciting. AoE Silence first skill is actually exciting. So... Uh, dark one we have we already talked about the same first and second skills like anything that makes it like anything where it's like it's an AoE with the first skill and then it does something that that changes uh, that changes the changes the opinion so Dark Slayer Knight another very cool skill name attacks all enemies two times decrease defense for three turns each attack will deal more damage according to your max HP and it's an HP type unit, so all stuff that he also has an HP. So these guys have Guild War leader skills. I should have mentioned that. Fire one has a forty percent resistance leader skill. Water one has a thirty three percent attack power leader skill. Wind one has a forty percent accuracy leader skill. Uh, light one has a twenty four percent crit rate leader skill, and dark one has a thirty three percent HP leader skill. I feel like the dark one will actually be more useful in guild content than the other ones. He can be used in four star towers because he's a nat four. And he's got an HP leader skill, which is a valuable leader skill. And he's got an AoE three-turn defense break, which is nice. You make him very tanky. 
He does uh, disturb HP, he does stuns, he does attack bar decrease, is not a very desirable for his skill, but he does do random defense break for three turns. It's usually, as long as you have some strip going before that, uh, he's going to target a random enemy, and this could be pretty valuable, right, with the, with the HP reader skill, because it's just for everyone in Guild Wars. So, not just for, like, a specific element like the Madeline cookies are. So, then we have... Hey, we're done with these. Hooray. Default Ginger Brave obtainable for the collab event. Cannot be used as materials. Craft Ancient Crystals, which we already figured because it's the same as the... Uh, same as the other... Some of the other, like, um, fusion units and can and things like that. So, otherwise, this would be too OP and it'd be broken. Uh, I think a lot of the stuff, yeah, we already talked about this, because it can't be, uh, can be used from the Europe Cup tournament, but it can't be used in the China qualification match. So, I don't think that these are going to be as crazy as, like, game-changing for these. We'll see, maybe I'm wrong, sometimes I'm wrong, that's just, that's just how it is. But, I don't think that these are going to be, like, game-changing, because at first I'm like, oh no, who's going to get, who's going to, who's going to magically have one in their account, and then they wind up winning everything. But this is not, these are not as crazy as to actually take home SWC for, like, one of these cookie monsters. So. <laughs> then we get Expeditions. This is, for the most part, if you've played any other mobile gotcha RPG, turn-based RPG, you already know what this is. It's Expeditions. And it's Expeditions. Again, if you've played any other mobile gacha RPG, you put monsters in there, they go do Expeditions, they come back with stuff. I actually think that this is pretty good. I think that we need to see more of this in Summoner's War, because there's so much stuff to farm. I think that them implementing more of this Expedition type stuff is going to ease the burden for a lot of players, because there's so much stuff to farm all the time. It's impossible for new players to catch up. It's impossible for returning players to catch up. Things like this are going to make a difference so I, I do actually really like this. There's something else that I really like too. Uh, we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, this is right. We already know. We already talked about this expedition. It's the, it's expeditions in every mobile RPG. It's the same thing. So this is the event dungeon. This was kind of sad when I realized it's just for jelly bean farming. So event dungeon. <laughs> here's the location. Consists of ten waves. Collab monsters will appear as a boss. Uh, there we go. We have clear rewards. You can obtain jelly beans as a reward for clearing each wave. Yes, jelly beans. Very exciting. That's that's basically that. I, I really wanted more. I kind of expected more. I shouldn't have expected more. I should have known better. Uh, but yeah, it's just to get jelly beans. <laughs> Very exciting, guys. It's just for jelly beans. Uh, then we have this new rival. Uh, which is part of other events too. You have to fight the rival and you get more jelly. I think it's jelly. I think you might get jelly beans and other gifts. We already talked about that, but I already forgot. Uh, collab monsters in TOA, which I think we should put more more newer monsters in TOA as well. Because there's a lot of monsters that have come into the game that we haven't even seen in TOA at all. It's just been the same units over and over and over in TOA. Aside from TOA Hell. Um, so that kind of changed things, but... Uh, this is the same thing as the last collab. It's just collab monsters summon an awakened form, uh, and then will not be summoned. Um, also applied to collab monsters for the blessings. Uh, we got the cookie run scroll. It's the same as the street fighter scroll. You're getting cookie run monsters. Most of them are going to be four stars. Some of the four stars are decent, though. I wouldn't mind, uh, that espresso. Fire espresso. I hope I get it. I got crazy amounts of summons, so I... <laughs> I feel like I should, but I heard some stories of people that already just didn't get them at all from hundreds of summons. Didn't get any uh, any of the SP new cookie cookie run monsters. We got new packs because of course we did. Monster subjugation. Oh, uh, monster subjugation improvements. We already know what SP are uh, unless you're brand new to the game. It's just uh, it's kind of like a banner, but not as good. You might just not get anything. Uh, we have monster subjugation changes, so they change the points that you need. Uh, and then they also change the final rank criteria on here. Fairly self-explanatory. Tartarus Labyrinth improvements. Uh, just minor improvements to Tartarus. World Guild Battle improvements. Just minor World Guild Battle improvements. Guild Profile improvements. These are just like fluff. Honestly, I just feel like it's fluff. The big thing here is, is just the new monster skills. Um, I don't think Guild Rival Battle... I honestly, I don't even know why they put this in the game. For new players. For new players. 
Just smile and nod. Just smile it for new players. This is the best thing about this entire patch, is just the disabling of emotes. <sighs> will be just disabled. We'll just instantly. That's the first thing. As soon as I'm done with this video, disable emotes. That's it. Uh, other improvements. Guild tower category added to help main buildings. Sorting criteria for guild manager activity points. I didn't actually read any of this before. Oh, that's, that's about it. And then some bug fixes. So. so this is interesting. Fix the issue of not gaining a turn when light magical archer. See, I didn't I didn't actually read this part uh before. So when it defeats a certain monster that was already stunned. Didn't know this was in the game for like seven or eight years. <laughs> like eight years at this point. Cause this was this was fairly fast in the game when it first came out. So it's been in the game for eight years. It's 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 been broken for eight years. <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway, that's for this one. Expect way too many videos coming out now. So that's uh, there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I will see you as always in the next one.